Judge Judy was an American arbitration-based reality court show presided over by Judy Scheindlin, a retired Manhattan family court judge. 2. The show features Scheindlin adjudicating real-life small claim disputes within a simulated courtroom set. 3. Prior to the proceedings, all parties involved must sign arbitration contracts agreeing to Scheindlin's ruling, handling and production staff management. The series is in first-run syndication and distributed by CBS Television Distribution. The program has won three Emmy Awards and has had the highest ratings in courtroom programming in the United States. The program debuted in 1996 and its 24th season premiered in September 2019. In March 2015, Scheindlin and CBS Television Distribution extended their contract through the program's 25th season, 2020-21, 4, at which point, as Scheindlin revealed in a March 2020 appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, the Judge Judy series will officially conclude its series run for an all-new TV series entitled Judy Justice. 5. Scheindlin's pre-court show reputation as one of the toughest family court judges in the country was the topic of a February 14, 1993, edition of the Los Angeles Times written by Josh Getlin. 6-7. On May 21, 1993, Joseph Wapner was released from the People's Court. Scheindlin called up the program's producers, Ralph Edwards' Stu Billet Productions, and said, you know, if he doesn't want to do this show anymore, I can do it. The receptionist snapped, are you crazy, lady? And hung up. 8. Getlin's Los Angeles Times article on Scheindlin caught the attention of 60 Minutes, which aired a segment on her on October 24, 1993. 9. The segment brought her national recognition and first led to an offer for her to write her own book. Scheindlin accepted the book offer, writing Don't Pee on My Leg and Tell Me It's Raining. In early 1995 two former People's Court producers, Kay Switzer and Sandy Spreckman, now involved in a lawsuit against Scheindlin and CBS as of January 2018, claiming they are owed compensation for discovering her, 10, asked Scheindlin if she would like to preside over her own courtroom series, 11, and she eventually accepted. 11, Scheindlin and her producers originally wanted the show title to be her honor but the production company, Big Ticket Television, decided on calling it Hot Bench instead, 1213, even promoting the show as Hot Bench with Judge Judy for some time prior to the show's debut. 14, however, Big Ticket ultimately decided on Judge Judy. 15. Petrie Hawkins Bird, the court show's bailiff, was also Scheindlin's bailiff throughout her career in the Manhattan family court system. When Bird found out about Scheindlin's show, he sent her a congratulatory letter, stating, if you ever need a bailiff, I still look good in uniform. She phoned Bird at his home in California to accept his offer and he has been the show's bailiff since its debut. Bird is the longest-running bailiff in courtroom programming history. Scheindlin has stated that the show's producers desired different individuals for the role, but she refused. Scheindlin appeared again on 60 Minutes on April 30, 2003. During the interview, Scheindlin stated, I have a contract with the company to do the program through the 2006 season. At that point, we will have produced this program for 10 years. Right now, I would be satisfied with a good 10-year run. I think that would really be phenomenal. It would be lovely if we could end on a high note and for me to say 10 years and I still had people watching and I had a second career that was a blast. 12. On September 14, 2015, Scheindlin began celebrating her 20th season anniversary presiding on Judge Judy. The program is the first in the court show genre to make it to 20 seasons without cancellation as well as the first to make it to this extent under one arbitrator. Three years later by September 2018, the Judge Mathis court show entered its 20th season and became the second and only other court show to accomplish this feat. Scheindlin's distinction as television's longest-serving judge or arbitrator rewarded Scheindlin a place in the Guinness World Records on September 14, 2015. 16. Each episode of Judge Judy begins with an introductory preview of the main case, sensationalizing various moments of the case with dramatic music, voiceover commentary, graphics, etc. This is followed by the show's opening music video. At the beginning of each court proceeding, Information regarding who is suing whom and what for is revealed originally by voiceover artist Michael Stull, who was later replaced by the show's current voiceover artist Jerry Bishop. Scheindlin typically begins each case by questioning the parties as to dates, times, locations and other facts central to the lawsuit. Monopolizing the discourse throughout the cases, 
Shindlin will sometimes only listen to bits and pieces of each of the testimonies as she is quick to reply, impose her spiel and disallow responses that are not concise or made during her desire to speak. 17. Sometimes, however, Shindlin will allow one or both of the opposing litigants to recount the entirety of their testimony. While delivering their testimony, litigants are not allowed to hesitate and must maintain fixed eye contact with Shindlin at all times. Further, litigants are not allowed to speak out of turn or talk to each other. Like most modern court shows, cases on Judge Judy imitate small claims court cases in which civil trials, non-criminal cases, are heard and ruled on. Typically Shindlin handles cases among former lovers, disputing neighbors, or family and friend relations. 18. Disputes generally revolve around issues such as broken engagements, unpaid personal loans, contract breaches, personal injuries from other litigants or their pets, minor property damages, for example, fender benders, carpet stains, etc., the fate of jointly purchased household appliances and rightful ownership of property. 18. As is standard practice in small claims court and most reality court shows alike, judge duty proceedings operate in the form of a bench trial, as opposed to its more common counterpart, the jury trial. Moreover, lawyers are not present and litigants must represent themselves. 19. Generally each show presents two cases, but infrequently, an episode will present a single long case, three shorter ones, or even four shorter ones. After expressing her views of the circumstances and behaviors of the litigants with regards to their testimonies, Scheindlin renders the judgment either by finding for the plaintiff, or by dismissing the case specifically with or without prejudice. Any counterclaims filed are handled similarly to this. Counterclaims are handled subsequently in the same segment though often cursorily by Scheindlin as many counterclaims on the program have been filed out of vindictiveness as opposed to legitimacy. At the end of each case, there is typically a monologue, where the litigators, and sometimes their witnesses, would express their feelings regarding the case directly to the viewers at home by speaking into the camcorder. Sometimes, however, these segments are omitted, especially after cases involving resentful litigants, too upset over the circumstances to remain in the studio and provide comment.